Welcome to Why Advice, a collection of timeless financial lessons. Wade versus Plunge, October 1, 2021. The eternal investment question. Do I invest my money all at once, or do I invest smaller amounts at predetermined intervals? Otherwise known as lump sum investing versus dollar cost averaging, or as our US colleague Jeff Troutner once termed it, wading versus plunging. What's the best option? Before that, what's behind the question in the first place? Fear and uncertainty. Fear of making a financial mistake because of uncertainty about the future. Both losing money and making a mistake can make us feel a little silly, but we need to acknowledge uncertainty is merely life we haven't yet lived, and there are no right or wrong decisions about things we couldn't see. In hindsight, we'll often reanalyse a decision that didn't go our way and agonise with some coulda, woulda, shoulda groaning and grumbling. Usually this is done by going over information that came to hand after the decision. When investing, we should never beat ourselves up over such things. The best decision is always the most informed one made according to the information we have at hand. So, the wade versus the plunge is like many other investment dilemmas. A question about a short-term future that we cannot see. How to inform yourself. The most useful guidebook is historical data. This allows us to make a decision that has at least been educated by analysis on what worked in the past using varying market conditions. To answer the question, we analysed our model portfolios over the 360 monthly starting dates between January 1990 and December 2019, and measured their returns over the following 12 months. We did so by comparing $1,000 invested in 12 monthly increments the wade, versus $12,000 being wholly invested in the first month, the plunge. To ensure an accurate comparison of returns, any money that was not invested in the wade portfolio was deemed to have earned the cash rate of the day until contributed to the portfolio. We looked at domestic and global share portfolios and then diversified portfolios. The portfolios ranged from 100% growth to 50% growth and 50% defensive. The results were not surprising. In domestic equities, plunging won 71.11% of the time. In global equities, plunging won 66.39% of the time. In a 100-0 portfolio, plunging won 70.28% of the time. In a 50-50 portfolio, plunging won 78.33% of the time. The average across the eight portfolios, plunging won 73.09% of the time. For the most part, plunging is a function of how often markets are either up or down on a monthly basis, and to some extent what the cash rate is at the time. Historically, most equity markets have shown to be positive 60 to 70% of the time. As portfolios become more defensive, their chance of successfully plunging increases as they are dictated less by the weight of more volatile assets such as stocks and listed real estate. Another unsurprising result was the average outperformance of plunging over wading. In domestic equities, it was 3.77% over 12 months. In global equities, it was 3.14% over 12 months. In a 100-0 portfolio, it was 3.43% over 12 months. This ranged down to a 50-50 portfolio, which was 2.49% over 12 months. The best years to begin a 12-month wade? 2007 and 2008 which makes sense. In falling markets, any money not in the market can't be affected by falls. 2002, due to the downturn after the dot-com bubble, 9-11, and some major accounting scandals that cast doubt across US companies, the fourth best year to wade might be considered the most interesting year. 1990, share market returns were incredibly poor in 1990, and in contrast, the cash rate was very high. If you started a wade in January 1990, 12 months later, the cash waiting to be deployed into the portfolio had earned over $900. By December 2019, the last starting month in the experiment, the cash waiting to be deployed earned only $25. That type of high interest rate environment is one instance where an investor can arguably afford to buy their time, ignoring whatever the market is doing, 
If an investor can get a 16% return on their cash as they weight it into a portfolio, it's still a fair result. Though it should be acknowledged, if cash is returning 16%, then inflation is running very high. The best years to plunge? 1995, 1996, 2003, 2004, 2005, 2012, 2013, 2016 and 2017. Across all the portfolios, every starting plunge month in those years beat waiting. Again, a function of how strong equity markets were during those start periods and the following 12 months. The other interesting year to consider, 2019. Because the 12-month period that starts in April 2019 finishes in March 2020, we get to see the impact of COVID on many of the results. It's emblematic of any market downturn. In several instances starting in 2019, where the plunging or waiting won, it wasn't much of a boast because both options saw a decline in value. It was just a case of who lost the least. It was most beneficial to start waiting in December 2019. The opportunity to continually put money into the market as it crashed due to COVID and swiftly recovered due to fiscal and monetary policy stimulus offered a huge upside against having every dollar invested during the crash. However, the Wade assumes regimented, robot-like behaviour, doing the exact same thing every month. Humans aren't always so inclined. This raises the inevitable behavioural issue. The plunge is one decision. The Wade invites further opportunities to delay. As noted, anyone who has decided to Wade is potentially doing so out of fear. Wading generally performs better in tougher markets because an investor is less exposed to any falls. If the market rapidly falls when they are halfway through their Wade, are they likely to continue with it or delay further until they feel safe? Is this 30-year period an accurate enough representation to gain an understanding of what decision an investor should take? Yes and no. Yes, if you expect capitalism to keep functioning and markets to reward investors for supplying capital and delivering positive returns two out of every three months on average. And no, because 1990 to 2019 has already happened and the future will be different. Our suggestion is not letting fear of the unknown dictate investment decisions. A dot-com crash, 9-11, two wars in Iraq, a war in Afghanistan, high interest rates, low interest rates, a global financial crisis, a volcano eruption that disrupted a continent, multiple tsunamis, a tsunami that caused a nuclear reactor to melt down, trade wars, geopolitical tensions, economic unions splitting, a currency crisis in Asia, countries defaulting on their debt, multiple outbreaks of respiratory viruses, one that shut down the world for a brief period. These are just some of the events that occurred during the period measured. Few were expected. The point is, there will always be an event around the corner that we don't expect. This experiment is useful to make a rational decision on why an investor should plunge instead of wade. But starting is only one aspect of investing. Eventually a portfolio will be fully allocated. At that point, there's no hiding from the unknown we fear. Sooner or later, a rogue wave will inevitably appear and will be dunked. Until then, come on in. The water's great. Just take the plunge.